yesterday we discussed about the time rate system initially we introduced that remuneration of laborers can be categorized into two one is time rate system which is based on time spent on the worker and the second one is piece rate system which is based on the output the results produced so in yesterday's class we discussed about the time rate system today we are going to discuss about the piece rate system or payment on the basis of results or output right now as i said here in this case uh, the volume of work is very important okay so the output the result is very important in computation of the wage that is why here the uh, on the basis of piece rate system the wage would be calculated as rate of wage per unit into number of units produced so uh, what is the cost of producing one unit into number of units produced by the employee so if the employee producing is if the employee is producing 50 units he will be getting say suppose if the rate is 2 per unit and if the employee is producing 50 units so it will be 2 into 50 whereas if another employee produces 100 units it will be 2 into 100 so as the output increases the wage level of the employees also the workers also would be increasing so that is the crats the concept of piece rate system and this method is suitable when uh, the, the precision or when the quality of course standard quality is important but uh, what is more important is the output and of course when the production is standardized you have a standard process of manufacturing and uh, you do that as a repetitive job that is continuously being done say for example in a uh, textile industry maybe manufacturing of t-shirts or may manufacturing of shirts you have a standard format okay this is the size this is the cloth this is the number you need so continuously the same thing is being done again and again maybe you are a plastic industry you are going with manufacturing of different plastic you no know, utensils so that process is constant you don't have you have a, st a standard design you have the standard material that is to be used and it is repeated over time so that can be one or maybe it is very common in case of food processing industries where they go with the manufacturing of different varieties of food in the in that case also maybe you have a a, a certain list of items a, a variety of items which is common which you on a daily basis you manufacture because that is perishable so there also how many units being produced is very important so in such cases we go with the manufacturing of piece rate system i mean the wage system of piece rate okay so that's what we call as a piece rate system that's why i, I put here volume of work done is important regardless of the time taken and the formula for that is wages uh, is of a worker is equal to rate of wage per unit into number of units produced uh, now next is as in the case of uh, time rate system here also we have primarily three different methods okay i repeat primarily three different methods of p rate p rate system the first one is straight p rate system which is the simplest the second one is p rate with the guaranteed time rate so you have two elements one is guaranteed time time rate which is awarded to the worker second is the one which is based on your efficiency how many units you produced so that is, likewise there are two components to that piece rate system which is having a guaranteed time rate and the third one which is you uh, know uh, very important which is different differential piece rate system okay differential piece rate system will be having different rates for an efficient worker there would be a higher rate that, that is given so in differential piece rate system there are three categories which we are going to learn the first one is taylor's differential piece rate system second one is merricks merricks differential piece rate system and third one is gard task and bonus plan these are the three things which we are learning in this methods of piece rate system so as i said there are primarily three methods of piece rate system okay which we are going to learn but if you look into the whole a uh, scenario of piece rate systems prevailing in the world there are many more than that 
but for our syllabus for our class we are discussing primarily these three first is the simplest which is just rate into number of units produced that is straight piece rate system and second one is piece rate with the time element guaranteed time element and the third one is differential piece rate system where the efficiency of the worker is taken care to through different plans right in that we are going to learn three first one is tailors second one is merics and fourth one and third one is gant gant task and bonus plan right now we will go and see one by one uh first uh of course uh, straight piece rate system i already shown here this is the formula for straight piece uh, rate system which is rate of wage per unit into number of unit produced it's simply multiplied with the rate per hour is per unit is decided it is multiplied by number of uh, units produced by that particular labor laborer or maybe by that particular employee or particular worker so that is straight piece rate system now going with the second one piece rate system with guaranteed time uh, here there are three things which you have to remember exactly like that that is a piece rate system with guaranteed time rate and include any one of the following and so and include any one of the following so uh, here in this case uh, the conditions here are first one if earnings on the basis of piece rate is less than the guaranteed minimum wages the worker will be paid based on time rate see suppose if the Uh, minimum guaranteed amount is uh, no per day is 500 okay just may take a note in your notebook if the minimum guaranteed amount is 500 based on time okay what when you come to work work for 8 hours you will be given with 500 if that is the case then the second option to the worker is rate per hour no rate per unit of production if it is 10 okay rate per unit of production is 10 and the worker on that day has produced 40 units worker has produced 40 units rate per unit is 10 okay in that case this worker will be given with piece rate why 10 i mean uh, uh, in this case this worker would be given time rate here which is 500 why because 40 into 10 is 400 right and uh, uh, the guaranteed time rate is 500 so the guaranteed time rate is higher than the piece rate in this in this case so the worker would be paid with that 500 okay that is worker a suppose if worker b produces 60 units per unit for uh, uh no for in this cases per unit uh, per uh, cost is 10 rupee per unit cost for that or uh, the promised wage per unit is 10 rupee so if this worker produces 60 units so it will be 60 into 10 which gives you 600 so for worker b it would be the piece rate that would be given instead of the time rate why because time rate is lesser than the piece rate piece rate that's what they have said if earnings on the basis of piece rate is less than the guaranteed minimum wage in our example the guaranteed minimum wage was 500 right and the piece rate for worker a was 400 so guaranteed rate uh, is higher than the piece rate right the or in other words piece rate is less than the guaranteed minimum wages so in that case the worker will be paid with 500 that's the first first condition it's very simple to understand minimum you will be given with minimum 500 irrespective of how many units you produce if you work for us for the stipulated time in the stipulated required standards that is first condition second condition is guaranteed wages according to the time rate plus a piece rate payment for the units above the required minimum suppose here there is a guaranteed rate of 500 500 for the product. so little more control is made over there 500 will be given if you produce minimum of 40 units so that is a condition you will be given with 500 rupees 
if on a uh, on an average you produce 40 units that's a standard which is fixed by the company and suppose if a worker produces for uh, uh, 40 units without considering anything he would be given with 500 rupees suppose if a worker would be producing more than 40 units which is the standard above the required minimum required minimum in this case was 40 above the required minimum then he would be given with another piece rate another extra element for his better performance so he is considered he's being considered for the you know for the efficient performance so that 500 which is required for 40 unit production plus suppose if we have produced 10 additional units he produced total 50 units 10 units additionally will be given with piece rate if he is an efficient worker is if, if he is less efficient worker minimum expected standard would be 40 units if you produce less than 40 units you will not be eligible to receive the guaranteed payment of 500 so that minimum standard of production will be fixed by the company by the organization and that is the second condition so the first condition is when piece rate is less than the time rate the employee would be paid with the guaranteed time rate payment second condition is if the guaranteed wage uh, if the worker produces more than the minimum standard required for uh, for getting the guaranteed payment guaranteed payment is based on time so for getting if he produces more than that then for that excess units produced he will be given additional piece rate just to recognize the efficiency of that worker okay now the third condition is piece rate with the fixed dearness allowance or cost of living bonus that is you would be provided with only piece rate but this condition is trying to uh, accommodate the slow performers also giving time for them to come up with for them to improve that is you will be provided with only what is uh, you know, based on the piece rate, but in addition, there would be some allowance, some dearness allowance, or some allowance to meet your uh, your daily requirement, your living cost. Maybe he is very new to this production process. It will be taking some time for him to come into this process. So during those initial days, his number of units produced would be very less. So in order to compensate for such workers and need additional bonus that is not based on piece rate, just a standard fixer rate will be given to that worker for that particular period where his minimum production is where, where he is uh, l much lower than the expected performance. So that is you will have a piece rate system in place, a fixed piece rate system. In this case, um, the previous example, which I said, the fixed piece rate was 10 rupee per unit produced. So that's fixed, right? But for new workers, they might find it difficult to meet their expenses with that initially. So for them, there is another another component called dearness allowance or living cost, which is irrespective of the uh the the number of units produced so any of these condition will be applicable in guaranteed time frame the first one is in case of uh you know if the worker is producing less than the uh, required or maybe if the guaranteed time rate is higher than the piece eligible piece rate eligible piece rate wage then the time rate would be given Suppose if the if the worker has just produced enough for you know, uh, for for that day, maybe which is not meeting the regular standard. In that case, the guaranteed time rate would be given to him if he is, work if he is working for that stipulated time. Then the second second is uh, it would be guaranteed time time rate would be given plus whatever he has gone beyond the minimum expected standard of production for that additional piece rate would be given. I said the example is if there are 40 units to be produced in a day, if the worker produces 55 units, he will be given that guarantee time rate because he met the 40 units requirement. Plus, he would be given additional piece rate for those 15 units. Additional uh, no, uh, rate payment will happen for those 15 units, which was excess based on the piece rate system. So the, the efficient workers are being considered when the payment is made. And the third 
the third factor is here it's space rate based on the number of units produced but maybe for the beginners maybe for the slow uh, performers an initial motivation encouragement is given by an allowance or a uh, mm, uh, living allowance uh, maybe uh, it can be in the form of uh, depending on the cost of living index right so an allowance uh, is being given just to encourage them to come into that factory system maybe initially they will they will not be able to produce as the experienced workers they will not be able to meet the standard as expected so they will be getting only less amount so in that case they are guaranteed with some bonus element or some incentive as an encouragement to be there in the system right so these are the basic uh, factors to be considered when we go with the guaranteed time rate system uh, now the next one uh, yes i had already shown this piece rate number of units into rate per i have just put an example for you to understand straight piece rate system here the example is number of units produced 22 rate per hour is 10 so wage is equal to 22 into 10 that is 220 it's very simple to understand now we are going with the most important thing differential piece rate system in today's class we would be learning about taylor's differential piece rate system so in case of taylor's differential uh, uh, piece rate system as you no know, so the name says it is uh, the the system was brought in by f w taylor you have learned f w taylor in your management the same person brought in this system also and here the standard time is fixed i'll tell you how to do that first you listen to me that is the standard time is fixed how many hours the worker should work also uh, the uh, the p the number of units to be produced also would be fixed okay so the worker who finishes work within the standard time is paid at a higher rate and if not at a lower rate so time may be 8 hours number of units to be produced may be 40 units so that's the standard time and standard uh, units to be produced so if a worker completes that within the stipulated framework he is given with a higher wage level high rate of payment otherwise that is if his efficiency as measured by the company if it is 100% what is required 100% then he would be paid with a higher rate otherwise a lower rate so uh, the worker who finishes his work within the stipulated time is called as efficient worker the other person is called as a less efficient worker okay so the efficient worker will be getting a higher pay and the less efficient worker will be getting a lower pay now how do we decide this efficiency it's already fixed by the company based on the standard hours and standard output required it's fixed in the in the factory environment and then uh, i have put uh, efficiency is measured as a percentage of actual time over standard time allowed there are two ways okay efficiency can be measured on how many hours was taken by this worker to come up with that stipulated outlet uh, output suppose if the company said that 8 uh, hours to complete 40 units right so the worker took 10 hours to complete 40 units so that is actually the actual time but standard time was 8 hours right so that is what we mean by as a percentage of actual time over standard time allowed units remain same the worker produced 40 units but instead of 80 hours the worker took 40 hours I mean, uh, work worker took 10 hours instead of 8 hours the worker took 10 hours to complete with the process of producing 40 units so that is actual time over the standard time he took 10 hours instead of 8 hours that's what we mean by one way of measuring efficiency the second way definitely you might be guessing it it should be based on output within the standard time how many units were produced that's what percentage of actual output over the standard output within 8 hours suppose if the worker has has produced the standard was uh, uh, no 40 units but the worker produced only 35 so that's what you compare so one can be based on the time 
one can be based on the output efficiency can be measured if the worker produced eight uh, in eight hours 40 units he is an efficient worker because the standard fix was that if the worker produced uh, no 45 units in eight hours he is an efficient worker because he produced more than what was standard if the worker produced 35 units in eight hours he is a low performing low efficient worker if the worker produce uh, maybe uh, 40 units in 12 hours he is also low performing because the standard was 40 units in 8 hours right so that is how you measure you can measure efficiency in two forms either by comparing the output with this actual output with the standard output or by comparing with the actual time taken with the standard time those two ways you can say the efficiency now we are going to uh, just discuss one exercise as an example and in next day's class we will do it okay i'll give you exercise so you can revise all these come back and you know do that exercise so in today's class i'm just showing you an example okay this is with the help of the following information calculate wages payable to x and y under taylor's differential piece rate system right now as i said this is standard production is 40 units per hour and the simple time rate is for 200 per hour okay then this is what taylor's differential piece rate 75 percentage of the pre piece rate when he is performing below the standard okay if he is performing below the standard 40 units 125 percentage of the piece rate when at and above the standard when the worker is performing either with the 40 units or above the standard above what is expected then there are two workers uh, uh, in a day there are eight hours it is defined the standard working hours it is defined as eight hours so uh, worker x produces 300 units worker y produces 420 units i'll just give you the introduction to the context of this exercise once more that is there are two workers x and y x produces three 300 units and y produces 420 units right uh, and uh, in a day of eight hours that's the standard a day standard hours for working is eight hours and standard production in this case is 40 units per hour okay 40 units per hour now let's see how this could be done so as I said, standard production here is 40 units per hour and the time rate applicable is 200. So in this case, we need to understand rate per unit because this is piece rate, right? So uh, uh, here it has been said 200 rupees per hour time rate they have given. So from time rate, we have to uh, find out what is the piece rate, cost per, uh, no, rate per unit, the payment per unit. So for that, what did we do? 200 was the time rate applicable and the unit, that was 200 per hour and the 40 units was a standard of production per hour. So we found out the, the per, per unit cost. How did we do that? 200 divided by 40, which gives me 5 per unit. It's very simple. It's very logical. Com uh, no, even without a formula, we would be doing that. If we are given with the total uh, total rate and number of units we will be finding out 200 by 40 total rate was 200 number of units was 40 so per unit cost would be 5 rate rupees 5 so that we have it now we know that time is 8 hours okay and the standard units per hour is 40 so we need to find out what is the total number of standard units for a day so that will be 40 into 8, which gives me 320. 40 into 8, which gives me 320 is the 320 is the standard units. Okay, so now we have what is the standard unit? We have it. We have the standard time. We have the rate per hour. Now, if we have the standard units and rate per hour, we can go with computation. Now, in question, they have said that 75 percentage of the piece rate when it is below the standard okay 75 percentage of the piece rate when it is below the standard and 125 percentage of the piece rate when 
when at and above the standard. So we need to know how much is it. We only know the piece rate. We only computed the piece rate. So what do we do? We compute the actual amount of low piece rate and high piece rate. Okay, we know that the actual, the standard piece rate is five. But now we need to know how much is low piece rate and how much is high piece rate. So in this case, the low piece rate, they have set 75 percentage of the differential piece rate system. So here we have found that the differential piece rate per unit is five. So it would be 75 percentage of five, which gives us 3.75 per unit as the low piece rate. Because they said if five is your uh, actual piece rate, low piece rate would be 75 percentage of that. High piece rate would be 125 percentage of that. So what did we do? We found out the low piece rate that is 3.75 per unit and high piece rate, which is 125 percentage into five. That gives me 6.25 percent. That gives me 6.25 percent. So that is basically why did we find out? We need to give the payment to the efficient worker and the low performer worker. Now we will look at what is the performance of X. We know that the standard output here is expected output is 320 units. But what is expected from X? It is 320. Actual of X is 300. So definitely actual of X in 8 hours is 300. But actual expected was 320 in 8 hours. So X is a low performer worker. So X would be given with low rate as in case of Taylor's differential piece rate system. So what do we do? He would be given with 3.75 into 300, which gives you 1,125 as the wage for that worker. Right. Then second one, why we will look at why was 420, but the expected standard was just 320. So definitely why is a high performing employee or worker. So why as per Taylor's differential plan should be given with higher piece rate, which is 125 percentage. We found out what is 125 percentage of the standard piece rate, which was 6.25 percentage. So what did we do? We did it as 6.25 into 420. The actual units produced. It is 420, which gives rupees 2625 for the worker. Worker Y. So just I'll just have a quick summary of this. So in this, we were trying to do the tomorrow. We will do the real example in this exercise in this. But before you come for tomorrow's class, just have a revision of all these. Do this exercise at home. Now I have just explained this. Right. So here we need two things: standard hours, standard output. We found out that standard hour is eight. That is directly given in the question, right? Standard output, we found out as 320. Now, how did we do that? We were given in the question that 40 units per hour. And we know that standard hour is eight. So it would be 40, I mean, uh, in four, 40 into eight, which gives you 320. So that's our standard unit. So at that time itself, we would be able to understand that X is having 300 units and Y is 420 units. Just by looking into that, we will understand that X is a low performer and Y is a high performer. Now, when we identify that X is a low performer, straight it should come into our mind. Taylor's differential piece rate system, Taylor say that low performers should be paid with low wages, low piece rate, high performers or standard performers should be given with the high piece rate. So definitely X is going to have low piece rate. That's why, and he has also defined piece rate, 75% of the actual piece rate should be given to the low performer. We found out the actual piece rate that was dividing the uh, number at uh, no rate uh, for uh, no rate per hour by number of units produced per hour. We found out the actual piece rate. 
So that was that was five in this example. We found out what was seventy five percent age of five. That is the piece rate eligible to the low low performer in this example. That is X. Now high piece rate is eligible to the high performer in this case. That is Y. So we found out what is one twenty five percent age of the standard piece rate. We gave that to Y. It's so simple. You just have to understand the concept and just check what is standard hour, what is standard production. If an employee, if a worker is performing below the standard, as per Taylor's differential system, he would be given with low wage, low piece rate. Whereas if a worker is performing as per the standard, up to the standard, here three twenty. If a worker is producing three twenty. Or more within the stipulated standard time, he would be eligible eligible to receive the high payment, high lay piece rate. So we now we will think about what is high. It will be different for different exercises. In this case, it was seventy five percent age of the actual piece rate for the low performers, one twenty five percent. Yeah, one. It was one twenty five percent. Yeah, one twenty five percent age for the high performer. That we found out. We gave it to these persons. so simple just try working out we will stop here